Hello. Welcome to Q and A Friday. Makes all your stresses and worries drift away. You may find that you will feel. Oh, oh couldn't think of anything that rhymes with find. You will find some bacon rind underneath your pillow, which makes you feel like a willow. Uh, my name's Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Bye. Uh, ooh. I've done a few of these Q&A Fridays now. I'm not going to count. Because I can't. I'm not gonna, I don't know how many, but quite a few. I'm going to put a podcast together. Just for the Q&A Fridays. Not like publicly, but just then add it to my website. Because I thought it would be handy to be able to just search through them for those that are slightly mildly a little bit curious or interested right oh where is it where's my stuff oh Q&A Friday okay we go so let's look I've got five or six questions so just let you know the my website is jasonnewland.com I make six versions of each recording three without music three with music of various lengths from normal length five and ten hours uh, <clears throat> excuse me the background is copyright free. It's my voice is going already. I only just started. Let's have a drink. Oh, that's better. So the background music is Deep Relaxation from Kevin McLeod in Compatech.com. You can find out more information by clicking background music on my website. And there's also my Facebook group, which is Jason Newland's Boring Group. My YouTube channel, which is at Jason Newland. What else? What else? What else? Uh, I have a page for reviews. I've only got one review at the moment, so it'd be good to have some more. Um, but you can actually write a review. And I've got a link, which is just called Write a Review. <laughs> I don't know, it has to be simple for me. I've also got a on a menu Q and A Friday and that is somewhere that you can ask questions for future Q and A Fridays. There's also a link for podcasts, so I have all my different podcasts listed. And I'm in the middle not in the middle, but I'm in the process of putting together. I'm going to put playlists on my website for all the different recordings I've got. And so far, I'm doing it in 50s. So I've got the Let Me Boy to Sleep 1 to 50, and then 51 to 100, and so on. So far, I have created. I'm now uploading the recordings for 551 to 600. Once I've done them all, I'll then make pages, embed the playlists into the pages, and then make a page with a link to each one of them. Just, you know, 1 to 50 and 51 to 100, etc. And I'm going to do that for all the different recordings, all the different podcasts. Just to make it a little bit easier, you know. For example, let's have a look. If I go to... Right, here we go. 
No. I just want to get it up so you can see. That's a Gregism. Um, right, let's have a look. I've got pages, pages, pages. Go to pages. So, for example, blimey, so 201 to 251, so I'll just view that. No, 201 to 250. So that's completed. So basically, just a page. Just a page with 201 to 250. Let me bore you to sleep. And there's only 50, so you can scroll down. You haven't got to scroll down far, and you've got all 50. You can just choose which one, click on it. You can play it, you can download it, you can like it, you can share it, you can even play it at different speeds. So can you? I don't know. No, you can't. <laughs> Why did I say that? I was lying. You can on the main podcast page, though. The, the like newest recordings, you can play, play them at different speeds. So, yeah. That's it. So what I'm going to be doing, I might also do podcasts based on the year. But I don't know if it's... Is, is that needed? Is it required? Is it useful? I don't know. I don't know. And then when I finish this, I'm going to focus on a Let Me Boy to Sleep to start with. Once that's completed, which will probably be over the weekend, I'm then going to start to look back and try and find the names, the titles I gave to the podcast episodes, because a lot of that is lost. And after searching online, I managed to find one of them, which was I think it was I'm Scared of Adele Songs or Adele Adele Songs Scare Me. That was the title of a podcast that I found. So I'm now thinking, hmm, wonder how many other titles I can re reclaim that I can find and, you know, change it instead of just being number 250 or number 506. Because I, I had names for nearly all my podcast episodes after probably the first hundred or two or two hundred, maybe probably after the first hundred. So perhaps I can find that, find them. Maybe even be able to find them from the raw file itself as well, the the actual recording that's saved. Yeah, so it's just, I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier for listeners to... I mean, first of all, I know a lot of people would listen on your own podcast, you know, that you favour. So, for example, Spotify or Apple Podcasts. However, you can, if you want to listen to the latest recording, just go to my website, jasonnewland.com. All the latest recordings will be there instantly. And you've got the latest 440, I think, of the recordings that I've uploaded. So there's quite a few that are actually, you know, obviously you've got to scroll down and keep clicking load more, but they're on there. You haven't got all thousands of them. This is why I'm doing the playlists. Does that make sense? Made sense to me, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> sort of a bit of sense there's also a contact form as well if you want to contact me uh, and that's it really, that's everything on the website I'm trying not to spend too much time working on a website but I'm kind of a little bit it's hard not to because I think I finally found, finally found the one I'm looking for. I finally found, <clears throat> I think going forward, so the next year, 2025, is going to be a little bit of a different year. I'm not going to take on anything new. I'm not going to, I'm not going to plan ahead in a sense of 
what I'm going to focus on is this, what I'm doing here, making recordings and making the website so it's a bit nicer with the idea of potentially creating an app that you can download on your phone and you can just play the latest recordings. And that's probably a bit easier than typing in jasonnewland.com into your browser. Not a lot easier to be honest, but it might be. So, yeah, everyone's got their own way of doing things and what they what they prefer. But this just might be a little bit easier to go to the website, bearing in mind how many different recordings I have. So six each time. And I'm just going to try and organize them. I mean, there is a search bar, like a little magnifying glass. So if I search for Adele, search for Adele, anything come up? No. But if I search for number, bearing in mind it's only the last 400. So if I put in Q&A Friday, Q and A Friday. Q&A Friday, there's 87 episodes and 25 videos. So I've also got my YouTube channel integrated into the into the thing. So if I go to videos, there's 25, let me boy to sleep. 25, blimey. 25, let me boy, um, let me, 25 Q&A Fridays. That's how many YouTube videos I've made, and they're all different. There's no none with music. They're all without music. Ten hours long. That's half a year. But then if I go back, oh no, it's not letting me go back. What? Okay, let me go back. Episodes. There's 87 episodes. But that does include like the six versions or the three versions or whatever. So. I'm guessing maybe that's 25 weeks again, just with a few extra added on. That's not bad though, is it? That is pretty much 25 weeks, half a year, that I've been doing the Q&A Friday. It feels, doesn't feel that long, really. Not really, does it, do you think? Do you think it feels that long or does it feel longer? Does it feel like forever? It feels like I've been listening to you for years, man. Listen to Q&A Friday. It's just like, when are you going to stop doing it? <laughs> Never. As long as you ask questions, I will continue answering questions. So, I mean, there was one week. I think I forgot to put, a, you know, like a thing onto my Facebook asking for questions. And I did the week with Vinny questions, so basically he just asked me questions. So I did that, it was a bit of fun, but generally every every time I put a, a notice up, I've always had questions asked, sometimes more than others. And but as I said, now, if you want to, you can actually go to my website and click on Q&A Friday. What I might do is just change it to questions or Q&A. Just, I don't know. But at the moment it's Q&A Friday. And I just got this thing that says, I make Q&A Fridays every week. I didn't put every Friday because I figured that might. If I say I do Q, if I call them Q&A Fridays and I have to explain which day of the week I release them, then, yeah, I'm not sure if. It, you know, that's a worrying. Um, and it says, if you have any questions for me to answer, please fill in the form. Fill in form below. So I didn't even put in the form below. Uh, just put in your name, email address, and your message. I mean, to be fair, you can, I'm not going to reply, so it doesn't matter what email, you can just put some random email address in if you want. It's up to you. You haven't even got to put, I mean, put your first name, you haven't got to put your, your full name in or anything. It's completely, so it's it's very anonymous. Um, although I never give out people's names 
on the when I do the podcast anyway I give out the first name but I don't give out surnames and I don't of course I don't give out email addresses so yeah that's that's there I will change that in fact what I'm going to do now because that's going to bug me it's going to bug me if I don't change it so Q&A 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 Friday edit Q&A fill in the fill in the form below okay added the and it's done let's check that it's updated has it updated fill in the form below see now I can rest now I can just chill chill down chill down so what is the first question well, I've got food delivery coming at half past seven today so the first question I got is from Christine. Oh, also, I want to say a quick thinky. A quick thinky? A quick thanky. I want to say, so a quick a look. So, I want to say a big thank you to Mary. And also a big uh, thank you to Ing. I apologise if I've not pronounced your name correctly. Ask anyone that listens to me. It takes about 10 years for me to learn how to pronounce a, word, a name. But I think I might pronounce it correctly. But I might not have done. But thank you to both of you for your PayPal gifts. Thank you. So... Um, the first question of the day is from Christine. Hi. <laughs> I won't do the voice though. Hi. Hi, Jason. I love living there. Hi. Why did you call your goldfish Milton? Now, Dimitri's asked the question, answered the question for me. Um probably in honour of the great poet then it said, then he says I beg your pardon the question wasn't addressed to me and I should have kept my mouth shut but it was just such a tempting guest to share let me see what Jason answers ok uh, you're wrong it wasn't um, the poet although it would probably make me sound more intelligent if it was but no it wasn't Milton the poet it was a named him after Milton H. Erickson, the hypnotist, a very, very famous hypnotist, psychiatrist. He he was the it was kind of like the Bruce Lee or the Muhammad Ali of hypnosis. You know, I mean, I think nowadays you'd call it uh, the goat. It took me ages. I couldn't. Why do they keep calling him a goat? It doesn't seem like a compliment. Is it because he had a beard? I don't like. But greatest of all time. Okay, got it now. But yeah, Milton H. Erickson. I've got quite a few of his books on my bookshelf. Good place to keep them. And he. He was very good at, he was non-directive. He he would hypnotise people. I mean, they'd know he was doing it, you know, he wouldn't just walk into a shop and do it. But he'd, he'd very, not submissive, not dismissive. submissive I don't know but he didn't really ask anyone to do anything he might say close your eyes if you feel like it but it was very non-dominant he wasn't like some of the hypnotists that you see on stage like one two three close your eyes blah, 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 and like talking really rapid like rapid inductions which is a thing and some hypnotherapists 
do rapid inductions in their practice. I've never done it. I know how to do it, or at least I used to know how to do it, and it's been a, been a while since I learned that technique, but I've, I've read about it, and I've also learned in person, in training, that technique. And there's lots of different types. But personally, it's just not for me. Besides, I'm not really a quick talker, generally. I am when I get excited. When I get like super excited, I can talk really fast, but generally, I'm not really like a super fast, um, like the old, you know, like the, the cliche car salesman. That's not me. You know, like talking a million miles an hour. It's not really me. It used to be a bit more me when I was very young. But I think I've kind of grown into myself. I've grown into my my I don't know. I sometimes think, have I found my voice? Which sounds perhaps a bit weird, considering you know, obviously I'm talking. I mean, what was it hidden? Was was it play, you playing hide and seek with your voice and you couldn't find it for ten years? No. But have I found my voice in a sense of being able to express myself in more of an honest way? I don't know. Am I able to be more real? But then I also come out with so many lies in a sense of when I do the recordings. Not, not lies, but like silly, I say silly things that aren't true. Technically, that is a lie. But in this contact, contact in this context, I don't really view it as being a lie. And when I say something that is fairly serious, then I'm generally, I'll be, you'll be telling the truth about that stuff, you know. But you know what I mean. I think. Is this my voice, or will my voice change? I don't mean how I sound, but what I say, the things, will that change over time? And I don't know. It's possible. It might do. I've met people that were lovely or seemed quite nice, and then, you know, they they hit a point in their life and... They were not so pleasant to be around, verbally. And to flip that on its side, I've met people that were the opposite to that. And they went from being perhaps a bit difficult to be around to being really easy to be around. I don't know where I am. I would say I'm, I'm more easy going now than I used to be. Yeah, I would say that. I used to, I think I was I was very guarded, very guarded as a person. And there's something I think because I'm quite open with these recordings and have been for quite a few years. I mean I've been I made videos and recordings blimey, seventeen years ago talking about my life and you know what was going on with me and how I was feeling and stuff like that so it's something I've been doing for a long time maybe that's been useful for me as a person I don't know I mean I do try and this isn't answering a question but I'm just going to talk about myself because it's my favourite subject I do try <laughs> it's true I do try to keep things light. I do try, you know, I, I aim to not get into like serious subjects. But I do sometimes get into serious subjects, I know. I try not to, but occasionally I kind of do talk about stuff. But yeah. So anyway, Milton Erickson. 
Milton Erickson was so I never had a pet before I got I mean I had a goldfish when I was a kid I think I had a goldfish when I was a, my late 20s and then that was it I don't think I had a goldfish again until I was in my early 40s so I got a gold I got two in fact I had Milton and I had another one that I put in with Milton and I don't know what her name was we just didn't get on she wouldn't tell me <laughs> no I don't know I can't remember what I named her Milton and it was a lady I decided and they were going to be married and have babies and stuff I decided it didn't happen so she might not have been a lady or she might just not have clicked you know they might not have got on as well but I had um, I don't even remember mentioning Milton that's weird I mean obviously I did but I can't remember mentioning Milton before so Milton was that's why I called him Milton and I promised him that if I moved if I was able to get somewhere decent to live I would get a decent tank not like an expensive tank just a decent size instead of a goldfish bowl and I didn't stick to that promise and I felt bad because I don't even know why finances probably to be honest but I just had stuff going on and I was going to I was going to get something and then I got distracted by other stuff and my voice is going croaky. So, I don't know, if I just, I think I've probably explained that. I've answered that question already, haven't I? So, Milton Erickson, he's, I, I think a lot of people wouldn't know who he is. But in the same way, it's like, if you if you're interested in I don't know, beekeeping. If it beekeeping is your interest, there's going to be um, a main figure, isn't there, in beekeeping? Maybe an author that's very famous within the beekeeping industry, whatever you want to call it, or stamp collectors, or people that are into neuroscience. There's always like someone kind of at the top that's just respected, and even though he's He's been gone for, wow, 50, 50 years or whatever. He's still remembered in the, in the hypnosis world. So, yeah. So that's Milton H. Erickson. He was, he was brilliant. I mean, something about him is he... Yeah, he had polio as a child. This is back... He was American and um, not that polio was strictly American obviously but it was the period I mean you think he was 80 in 1980 so he was born like 1900 or something and he so he had polio and he learnt because he could hardly move he learnt how to he started studying he had a big family started studying the the communication between his siblings and his parents and notice when people were lying or when people were I mean he probably I reckon he would have been a really good poker player. He could have um he could have like read people's tells and stuff like that. So yeah, and he he became a psychiatrist and he incorporated hypnosis into that and he was one of the first I mean you could say Freud was as well but one of the first respected people in a high academic position and a high medical position that was using hypnosis because it wasn't it was very much frowned upon 
and when Freud stopped using hypnosis because he started out doing hypnosis when Freud stopped he it set back it set hypnosis back a look quite a few years is I think and Milton Erickson wasn't the only person doing hypnosis and there's lots of different people doing it it's just he yeah he was just really well known and books have been not just written by him but about him and about his techniques trying to figure out what he did how he did it how is he was able to get people or help people to change without like it didn't look like he was really doing anything uh, one of his techniques he had uh, someone came up to him he was a doctor and he had a private practice so he moved to Arizona because he had another polio attack when he was I think in his maybe his 50s maybe 60s so he, and he had really bad asthma I think so he moved to Arizona where the heat is drier it'll be better for his chest and he was in a wheelchair and I might not making it up but I might be getting some of the facts wrong but he definitely did have another bout of polio or resurgence of it or I'm not quite sure what the medical term is so he was partly paralysed, he was in a wheelchair he was colour blind so he wore the only colour he could see was purple that's the only colour he could really recognise so he wore all purple loved the, loved the colour purple and he used to in his older years when he was probably in his the last 10, 20 years of his life he would have little groups come into his office and he would hypnotise them and it would train people on how to do it and some people would come in and they wouldn't even remember any of it they'd be there and then like it was four o'clock time to leave and they couldn't remember anything of what happened and he'd be just sitting there the other side of the desk in his wheelchair just talking possibly boring them to sleep <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but he's very powerful he's like he was really it was something he had he had he had something I can't, I can't whether it was self belief or whether it was just belief in what he was doing because that can have an effect if someone truly believes in what they're saying and that for example if I was to talk knowing that even if you try and stay awake while I'm talking you're going to fall asleep if I really believe that what I'm doing is going to send you to sleep then it maybe would make me more competent I'm not sure I don't know but it was pretty amazing that one of the one he one of his clients when he was a bit younger came in and said to him that no matter what I do it would have been with a different accent, not my accent. But no matter what I do I, I don't know what the accent was. No matter what I do, I can't change my weight. I can't change how, how much I weigh. I can't and he said, are you sure? He said, yeah. Now, this person wanted to lose weight. No one's, I don't think there's many people, not many overweight people have gone to the doctor wanting to put weight on. I mean, it's probably rare. So, so this person that maybe was a little bit overweight, maybe a lot overweight, I don't know. Like health-wise. And he said, oh, I can't, I can't control my weight. So what he said to them is, I want you to go home he might have pronounced the H when he said home. I wanted to go home and come back in two weeks' time. I need you to have put on four pounds. 
or you to eat chocolate and cakes and I want you to put on I need you to put on four pounds and the person said uh so you need to put on four pounds so they did they went off and they came back four pounds heavier and he said see you can control your weight and that in itself changed the way that that person experienced themselves because that limitation they were putting on themselves or the the limited way that they were thinking changed because they just proved that actually the idea that they don't have any control over what they weigh was not true they should have come in and said I can't lose weight that's what they should have said they should have worded it properly oh itchy back so and there's a few other things I can't I'm trying to think of Oh, I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head that he did. Oh yeah, he um, someone wanted to stop smoking, so he said to them, "Okay, well, what you need to do is put the cigarettes on the mantelpiece of the fire because they used to have fires back then in the you know in the house." Did you know that when lavatories? inside toilets were introduced most people didn't want them most members of the public found it disgusting the idea of having an inside toilet and the majority of people did not want anything to do with it they wanted to continue going outside in the absolute freezing cold in the winter going into a dark dingy in the garden like a shed or whatever it was a latrine isn't that weird didn't want it didn't like no don't want that it's horrible now can you imagine just having to I mean literally before going to bed you'd be trying to get every single bit of liquid out of your body wouldn't you before coming back into the house hoping you don't need to go to the toilet until the morning. You'd be ringing... But anyway, I'd do that before bed anyway. Try and get as much out. It sounds weird. I don't mean it in a weird way. But so I haven't have got to get up. It doesn't work, though, because I kind of ruin it by having half a bottle of water before I go to sleep. So that probably doesn't help. I do drink quite a lot of water. I've got loads of bottles of water empty ones here but not empty bottles of water but the empty bottles that empty bottles that did have water in you can't have an empty bottle of water can you it's either a bottle of water or it's not a bottle of water and that's what Erickson used to say he didn't he didn't oh yeah so put the cigarettes on the mantelpiece and any time you have a cigarette you and he gave her a task he, he found out what she this lady or man what they hated doing what's the thing that they disliked most and I think this lady said uh, scrubbing the floor this is in the, in the old you know this is in the days when floor scrubbing was a thing and it definitely isn't a thing here in this flat. Oh, and they. Um, she said, "He said, what you got to do? You can have a cigarette. That's fine, but every time you have a cigarette, you have to spend the next two hours scrubbing the floor." And that was, and he kind of almost, although he he suggested it to her, but it was almost like a hypnotic suggestion as well. So she felt compelled to do that. And apparently people used to do what he told them, or what he suggested. Maybe because they respected him so much, or 
because he did have a really good reputation, or maybe because he hypnotised him. I, I'm not sure. And that was quite a good way to stop the person from smoking because they didn't want to keep doing that. The idea of spending two hours scrubbing the floor that didn't need scrubbing because it's already been scrubbed three times already today. It changed their mind. It changed their, their brain. was like, okay, it started to see it different started to feel different about the idea of having that puff because of the consequences of having to be on her knees for the next two hours scrubbing I'm, I mean it's hard to scrub without being on your knees unless you're good at handstands or if you've got someone that can hold your legs. You can do kind of like, you know, the wheelbarrow walk thing. They could just like push you up and down. Anyway. So that's the question. That's the answer. Milton Erickson. He was also used. His techniques were used partly as part of the neuro-linguistic programming that was created in the 70s. They used the Milton model, which they took from studying him. Uh, it was also partly Virginia Satir and ooh, Fritz Pearls as well. And then on top of that, linguistics. I can't remember where they got the linguistic part from. So they kind of mixed that all together to find ways to... get rid of phobias and to help people to change your mind change in a way that is useful so an example was for me it wasn't NLP I mean I didn't know what NLP or hypnosis really was at the time but when I was 16 there was I think I, I, I spoke about this recently I think there was a spider in my, in my bedroom, just a little spider, and I couldn't go to bed till I found it. So I'm sitting in the living room, probably on the floor, because I probably sold my sofa for bread. <laughs> uh, and for Skittles, M&Ms. And I realised that it wasn't my phobia it was my stepmum's phobia and she'd left she'd gone she was living in a different part of the country so it's like well she didn't she doesn't need me so therefore I don't need her phobia and there was that logic kind of kicked in why am I why it's not even my phobia I just I've embraced it because I wanted to I guess be close to her I wanted to be like her but I didn't need to and it went vanished instantly to the point where I could not care ever since not being bothered I had a similar thing with wasps I used to be I mean I got stung uh, quite badly when I was a kid by spy wasps so I had a, li a legitimate reason to want to kind of keep away from them but you know what I noticed when I see people like on a bus going absolutely nutty because the bus, uh, there's a wasp on there it doesn't help them it makes the wasp, it seems to make the, the wasp more likely to sting. I just sit there, do nothing, and I'm not saying that, you know, I'm never going to get stung. I've been, I got stung a lot when I was a kid. But I've never been stung since I was probably 10. 
by a wasp ever and I've had loads of wasps come up to me and they just leave me alone because they don't bother me I'm not worried by them I am the wasp whisperer <laughs> that's what I yes I should have my own TV show right I should move on to the next question I don't have I answered that I have answered it I think I could have just said to be fair I could just answer the questions Milton Erickson and I could do the questions in pretty much what two minutes but that would ruin it wouldn't it don't you think so next question is from Cara Ooh. oh okay Cara um, no I just I just clicked off the thing come on no the next question is from Kim no um, the next question okay I'll go Cara and then I'll work up the next question is from Cara what actually happened to make the royal family disown Harry and his wife there are so many opinions and theories floating around out there and I'm curious to know if someone who lives in England has access to the real story well the theory from this this end you know living here is there was a again this is this is hearsay really it's not I don't know I don't the only people that are ever going to really know is going to be the people involved. So can't go by what the papers say. Although Prince Harry, I still call him Prince. He is, he's, he's the king's son. It doesn't matter if he's moved to another country. He's the king's son. So he's a prince. And he's going to be the king's brother in a few years time however long so he's you know I mean he's he's one of the most I'm going to say important I mean doesn't matter if you're a loyalist or not just as far as the hierarchy of the country he is near the top I mean you can't get higher than the king outside of the royal family you've got a prime minister and that's kind of it, you know, Chancellor of the Exchequer, the people in the cabinet, or, you know, but ultimately the king, that's the highest position in this country, really, you can get. Or the queen, like if the queen's in charge, that is, like the previous queen. So he's, to me, he's always going to be Prince Harry. I remember when he was born. Not the exact moment, but I remember when his mum got pregnant with him. It, you know, so it's... What are you, what are you moaning about, Vinny? You've had your dinner. It's only 17 minutes past five. It feels like it's like nine o'clock at night. Pitch black outside. I feel like it's time for bed. It's got easy. Anyway, I what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so Prince Harry, he wanted to go to the toilet. Personally, I don't think he wanted to go to the toilet. He wanted to just to go out and see his see someone, a neighbour. But I'm making a recording. You know what I mean? So, uh, I didn't read the book that Harry wrote. Well, whoever wrote it with him or for him, I think he probably had a ghostwriter. It might not have done. I didn't watch the Netflix TV show about him either. Because I'm not really that interested, generally. It, um, I think it's because I've grown up hearing about the royal family 
from a very early age and I've seen what the press do how the press tear into them like constantly just you know especially what they did to Harry's mum I was I've told this story before and it's totally true on the night or the early morning after why are you moaning Vinny you want something I haven't got anything to give you your treats are on the way they'll be here in about an hour half an hour okay and when they get here you can have one but until then I can't give you what I don't have okay blimey um yeah so the morning after his mum that dog is annoying me now what what do you want do you want that blimey really oh god he wants an egg it was that loud wasn't it sorry he wants an egg I don't know why he was like just moaning at me so there was an eggshell he had an egg yesterday or t earlier today I can't remember when so the eggshell was on the top which is grim really I shouldn't be really leaving like eggshells around but anyway at least got no slugs and he wants to chew it up but he wants an egg and I've just given all my eggs to my neighbour the one day I give all my eggs away damn yeah the morning after I might get this sentence out without him moaning hopefully so I'm back he's hungry he wanted another pack of food I don't know why he's suddenly got a hunger going on he had some food I'm going to say he had some food earlier I mean does eat more than once a week but I don't know why he's so hungry uh, da, 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 da. right yeah the night after Prince Harry and Prince Williams' his mum left us I went into the news agents the, the morning after and it's weird because I was watching New Jack City on video and when I turned the video off which is like 3 o'clock in the morning maybe 4 o'clock in the morning I was around my friend's flat he was in bed asleep and the news came on and I thought I just didn't know what the hell was going on it was very strange it was on all the channels apart from channel 5 I think channel 5 had some European game show on probably Anyway, the um, I went to the news agents, and the week or the two weeks building up to when she left, the newspapers were absolutely hammering her, calling her, pretty much calling her all kinds of horrible names, and the front page was her, I think, on a water ski or maybe on skis behind you know water skiing or on one of those water ski things and they were really because she was in on holiday I guess in France with Dodie her boyfriend and the pic the, basically the, the headline was nasty towards her like really quite vicious and they had been all all leading up to the to that day the second edition of the newspaper because that, that that edition had been printed like you know the night before the next edition of the same newspaper that was probably released about 8 o'clock it was um, the what do they call her Oh, blimey. Oh, 
they basically she was the most perfect person in the world and they were singing her praises and saying how wonderful she was and you know the, like literally a few hours earlier they were really slagging her off but they went get on there get on there now Vinny what do you want what do you want what do you want what do you want? I tell you, he wants to play. Get, go, go, go and sit on there, please. Go and sit on the settee. He doesn't normally hassle me like this. What do you want? You're just eating your dinner. He's eating his dinner. What else does he want? I don't know. What do you want, Vin? He doesn't normally give me this much hassle when I'm doing a recording. Like... <laughs> He's just, I took him outside, he did a wee. He did a wee before we came in earlier. He had a packet of food a couple of hours ago. Now he's just had another packet of food. Well, I say a couple of hours ago, probably three or four hours ago, but he's just had another pack. Does he need a poo? Do you need a poo poo? There's a real lack of communication and it annoys me. <laughs> like, what are you trying to say? Tell me, tell me. What are you trying to say, Vin? He's like this. Whenever he sees his mum, who was he, who had him before me, he, when he visits there, he plays up when he comes back. He really does. He he acts he acts up. Sometimes for a few hours. And I think that's what he's doing now. Because when he's over there, he gets cuddles, and she's in bed, and he cuddles with her and stuff. And they watch TV. And he comes over here, and I'm sitting at the desk, working and doing, well, not working, but, you know, making a podcast. And it's just a different environment. I think he prefers it over there, I think. It's hard to tell. It's a bigger flat. There's a garden. There's more stuff, you know. All his stuff is in here. All his... not that He's not really a toy dog. I mean, he's a real dog. I mean, he's not... He's not too interested in balls or things like that. Unless he's out. Which is kind of... Not strange, but I don't know why. Oh, right. Now, as my neighbour just phoned me. Asked me if her kid can just stay here for ten minutes while she goes and gets her birthday cake. Oh man, um, that's at ten past six, so it's now thirty-three minutes past five, and I got a delivery about to come. Everything's happening. It's like, leave me alone. And now Vinny's gone off into the bedroom on a in a sulk. I know he's you know he's standing behind me. <laughs> I thought he'd gone. I. I've always, I like the two kids, the two, you know, the, they're not kids anymore, are they, but Prince William and Prince um, Harry. I kind of quite liked Harry because he was a little bit of a rebel, a little bit like his uncle, um, not Andrew, not that, this, who was the uncle that was, it was the king's brother? who was very much into acting and like uh, he was kind of the odd one out in the royal family. I always felt that Harry was a little bit like that. He liked to do his own thing and didn't really toe the line as much as his brother did. And maybe he didn't feel he had to because he wasn't going to be king. And he'll never be king because his brother's going to be king and then if that happens to his brother his brother's son will be king and then the other kid you know so it's basically Harry's never going to be king and this is very strategic <laughs> um, uh, yeah it's basically for me I think the the whole 
him getting married to Megan, isn't it? Megan. When he got married to Megan, they still call her Megan Markles, Marbles, Marples, Markles, Martel. And she's not. She's Megan Windsor, isn't she? Because they're the Windsor. He's Harry Windsor, I do believe. So when they married, there's all this stuff about, you know, that it's in the newspapers constantly about where she was from and her, her family and about the colour of, of her skin, all this stuff, and about how there might be some... Um, prejudice within the royal family and whatever I don't know how much of that is true I don't know what he wrote about in his book but he definitely left the country for a reason and he wasn't being treated I don't think he felt he was being treated correctly by the press and maybe not even by his own people I don't know I get that feeling okay? again I didn't watch the documentary or anything like that some people think that he, he is being controlled. There's that feeling like in the public, people have said to me, he's just being controlled by his wife and he's not happy and he doesn't want to be with her. And I don't know. It's, who knows? It's hard to know, isn't it, what's going on in someone else's house. There's not really anyone in the world that control, can really control him other than the king. You know, he's a prince. He's it, it, There's very few people in the world that can really tell him what to do because he's he's got power. Not just financial power, but power as in... I don't mean like Transformers or superheroes, but you know, you know what I mean. He's got influence, huge influence, and he knows people with influence. So if he was to do something really bad he'd probably get away with it because of his in influence so I can't imagine that he would anyone would be able to just control him if he didn't unless he let them I've got a theory that he's in love with her and they love each other I know it's old soppy but I think maybe they just love each other and they wanted to do their own thing and I don't think they ever really forgave I don't think either of the brothers forgave the way that they were treated you know when their mum left uh, there, was, there was a lot of very political very kind of Real family-ish kind of stuff, you know, having to walk on their own next to each other, like just the uh, yeah. And also, you think about it. Imagine seeing in the newspapers all the stuff that's being talked about, like your family being talked about. I know they were born into it, but it's not their fault they were born into it. And some people, I, know, I remember hearing some people say, well, if you don't like it, leave. That's what he's done. He's left. Didn't like it and he left. I don't think he left because he liked it. That's my theory. But think about what he's done. He's done some good stuff. The, uh, the games that he set up for Invicta games, for, for um, forces that have been injured and stuff. He's he's done some pretty good things he's got well, some really good things as as his brother as well um, Prince William future king so yeah it doesn't really make a, a I don't really kind of understand what's going on and I don't think we're ever going to really know what really went on because I mean, at the moment, the king is ill. But you won't tell anyone what it is. You know, you won't tell what kind of illness it is. We know what illness is, but you won't tell us where it is in his body or whatever. And I realise that's personal, 
but he is the most public figure in the country. There's no one more public than him as far as being in the world. He's the most famous English person in the entire world. He's even more famous than Hugh Grant, I would say. So it's not that, I mean, it's personal. He shouldn't have to do anything he doesn't want to do, but it's there's very much that stiff upper lip keeping things under wraps and stuff, which possibly is just more to do with the generation. My dad's like that. And my dad's a little bit older than Prince Charles, or King Charles, rather, by a couple of years. So, yeah, I suppose in, in, in response is I don't know. <laughs> that was my, my shortened version of I don't know. Sorry, Cara, I'm not sure. Jen, but you should, I don't know what the papers are like in America, but the papers here, horrible, horrible. The press is really bad here when it comes to celebrities and uh, especially the royal family. The royal family, every single day, they're talking about the royal family. You won't get a newspaper one, one day of the year you won't find a newspaper like the tabloids that aren't mentioned in the royal family. Even if it's just briefly. And when something happens, half the newspaper is filled with stuff about the royal family. Uh, so that's that question answered. Jen asks, what's your favourite day of the week? I'm going to say probably Saturday, because boxing's often on, on a Saturday. I don't, yeah, probably Saturday. Um, I quite like Sunday. I do generally have a lazy Sunday. I mean, some would argue that every day is a lazy day for me. But I probably do, I kind of, I don't do a huge amount on a Sunday. I don't, I do some, yeah, I, do, I suppose I do do a podcast on Sundays, papers. But, Saturday if boxing's on that's the only reason I don't do anything I don't you know don't really do anything on a Saturday but if boxing's on like in two weeks time the um, Fury Usyk 2 is on and that's in um, the Middle East Dubai or whatever Riyadh season and it starts at Three o'clock in the afternoon. That's like seven hours of boxing. It's a lot, even for me. It's it's a long slog, but there's some just some really good fights on there. So I'll look forward to that day, and I'll get up, and it'll be something to, you know, my week will be heading towards that day, really. So I'd say Saturday, when there's boxing on. Yeah, I'd say. I'm trying to think. No, there's no other days of the week that... If there's a TV program coming out, like, you know, when they sometimes now... You know the streaming, they, they used to just give you all of the episodes and now they started drip-feeding, like television has always done. And maybe they'll... they'll let's, let's say, for example... The Penguin, the TV show The Penguin, they'll give maybe the first two episodes and then they'll do weekly, which defeats the object of streaming. But for me, the point of streaming is you're not watching telly anymore. You don't have to wait a whole week for the next episode. I don't want to do that. But on those occasions where I do have to, and it's a a program that I particularly like then I will look forward to that day as well uh, for example The Boys if that comes out I think on a Thursday so I look, for, I look forward to Thursday morning because I can watch The Boys the new episode That that's when it's on I mean it's, it's I don't know when the new season's coming out probably next year sometime 
but on a weekly basis I would say probably Saturday I look forward to Friday night to listen to the radio so I go to bed at probably 10 I listen to the radio so I quite look forward to that there's not much TV that I watch in fact there's no TV that I watch really unless Big Brother's on then I'll watch Big Brother but yeah, yeah I'd say probably Saturday I'd say um, Dimitri asks me since it was Ozzy Osbourne's birthday two days ago what's your favourite song album by Ozzy OFC I don't know what that means if you like his music if not then I guess the question doesn't have any sense I couldn't name one Ozzy Osbourne song I wouldn't I also know who he is because he's famous but I mean was it Black Sabbath he was in wasn't it so I don't know um, no I'm, ne I'm never really into the heavy metal scene I mean, there's a few you know kind of I suppose uh, what's his name Bon Jovi that kind of came from like a softer heavy metal kind of thing like headbanging music or whatever I think they used to call it but living on a prayer things like that that, was that you know I like that but Ozzy Osbourne no I think it's funny his TV show was great when him and his family it was about the Osbournes what was it called blimey I can't remember um, the Osbournes um, yeah so I got no, I can't answer that question I'm sorry I've got no idea I don't know any of his songs I've never listened to an album by him I'll tell you an album I'll be listening to it's there's, an, there's a band there's two that I would recommend one is Falling in Reverse they got an album out I can't remember what it's called but it's um, one of the albums is let the one of the songs is let the world burn and prequel I think it might be called prequel the album it's the, I mean the videos are like movies and it's just really really good it's very different from what I normally listen to and there's another singer and uh, you're probably better off watching him on YouTube he's called Ren R-E-N amazing it's unlike anything I've seen before it's like a mixture between rapping singing but really clever and really uh, I don't know how to explain it it's phenomenal Ren R-E-N it's on YouTube and it's really good there's one particular I think it's called Dear Ren the song and it's, it talks about mental health and it's so the video is really good I know that's not answering your question but I thought I'd try to talk about music <laughs> vaguely um, the next one is Robin if you were Prime Minister what changes would you make in England see my problem one of my many many issues is I would I think I'm a see I'm quite gentle I would say I'm probably a liberal yeah definitely liberal I'm not left I'm not right I'm kind of in the middle but at the same time um and I know that there's I used to my friend used to go oh liberal bleeding liberal bleeding hearts and stuff like that and like yeah but if it wasn't for liberals we wouldn't have benefits there wouldn't be an NHS there wouldn't be it's like oh but it's, it's Labour no but it was liberal thinking that gave us the NHS it's liberal thinking that change the prisons so that 
you know, people got treated better. You know, it's liberals, it's all the things that improved the country. Liberalism, liberal thinking, changed things, made it so that kids were treated better. Um, I don't know, brought in laws that protected children, protected old people, protected people generally. So I'm kind of a liberal in that sense. However, <laughs> I think I'd, I could never be in a, in a, I couldn't have power because I would probably take myself too seriously and I would, I'd have liberal ideas but I think I would at the same time be quite um, forceful with them and I'd be very unpopular very quickly so that's why I could never ever be the Prime Minister you know that I would change people I would ban any cars that went over the speed limit it did all cars would have to be changed everyone would have to be have to breathalyze before they got into the car and started it and, you know all things like that which would be very unpopular the TV license would be scrapped and bailiffs would be banned there's things like that things that hurt people I think or potentially can cause problems you know if everyone was driving around at 20 miles an hour it would annoy the hell out of most people but at the same time it would keep pedestrians safe or safer but it would slow down the community it would slay the, you know, the economy would probably go to to a ruin if that was the case so so that's why I'd be rubbish um, I would it'd be a, a law that anyone that came into this country would be treated nicely so that future generations of those people when they you know have babies and those kids grow up they don't grow up hating the country that they're born in because they haven't, you know, because it's got to imagine like being born and seeing your parents being mistreated or just disrespected by the public or by the police. You're not going to have a good attitude, are you? You're going to have, you're going to like, oh, wait a minute. So I would change the law, make it law that everyone that lives here is treated with kindness and anyone that comes into the country immigrates into this country is treated with kindness and fairness and love everyone has to love each other I'm going to force how do you enforce that? it's impossible so that's what I was saying I would enforce try and enforce kindness and it wouldn't work it, it's impossible it really is, I do believe. I don't think human beings have the capacity to do it. And I don't have the capacity to be in charge of anything. I can't even be in charge of myself. So, yeah, being a Prime Minister, no. If I run the country, the country probably, yeah, it would be destroyed economically probably within about six months. I mean, completely gone. It, <laughs> it would be yeah it'd take probably a hundred years to recover from what I would do to the country and I wouldn't do it out of malice I wouldn't do it out of you know it would just out of trying to make changes out of trying to help people so I'm well kept away from anything like that I, mean, I don't have the mental capacity to do that stuff anyway. I'm not intelligent enough to be a pri to be the prime minister or all that stuff. But I really, yeah, I'd want to help. I'd want to help people, but I'd want to help everyone. And it's impossible to help everyone. It's just impossible. What you got to do is just go on Facebook or Twitter and see the different opinions. It's almost amazing. Like. I've, I've seen people sing like a little kid singing amazingly on a talent show like in America or somewhere 
like the voice is phenomenal almost like Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston phenomenal and there's a lot of people saying that was amazing and then other people saying oh that's rubbish that was crap like and I realise some of them might just be saying it for effect but I do believe some of them probably do actually feel that way and there's people that think Mariah Carey is a rubbish singer so how how but some people do some people think that Tyson Fury is a rubbish boxer some people it's like everyone's got their opinion and they seem to believe it and I realised years ago that my opinion is not really worth believing it's it's not really it's just thoughts I'm actually reading this book called the is it the chimp paradox and it's very interesting I was listening to it yesterday and let me know if you're interested in uh, sending me as a gift an audio book and then I could put a page together because uh, Aud- Audible allow you to send gifts to people all you need is their email address and a title of a book and you can go on Audible and send that as a gift like the book so I don't know quite I'm, I've kind of looked into it a little bit but I don't really want to keep asking people st- for stuff but if if it's something you'd like to do because that that'd be useful because I do listen to audio books I spend yeah over a hundred hours a month listening to audio books I'll, t- I'll talk about the, the chimp paradox it's a very famous book uh, I'll talk about it another time but yeah I shouldn't be allowed what change have I made in England I think anyone that hates living here should be allowed to leave <laughs> basically if people don't if you you know there's a lot of people like, mm-hmm. if you really don't like it that much then maybe you should get out and that that's for everyone not regardless of where they were born most of the people that moan about this country are people who were born here I seem to find and I've done my I've done my fair share of moaning but the reality is this is probably this is one of the one of the best countries in the world to live as far as being taken care of as far as the national health service and the social care it it's not perfect by any means obviously but it is is one of the better countries I would say I'm not saying it's it's better than anywhere else it's just from that perspective if a person's unwell it it can be better to be here than to be born in maybe India for example where there's a huge huge amounts of people and the person might not get any care because they can't afford to and they're not you know they're kind of almost invisible But again, opinions change, and everyone's like, it's going to have an opinion on that. So, which I'm not interested in other people's opinions, or I'm not even interested in my own opinions, man. But I, I do sometimes think like a bit of gratitude is useful, and I do feel grateful sometimes. Not all the time, but you know, I've got a home. I've got somewhere to live, which is the same as saying I've got a home got food the only reason for me to go hungry is if I cause that problem for myself so you know I've always got food generally you know and bills I know bills and stuff is continuous but that's the same for everyone really I tell you one thing I would do I would make the street lights on all the time I would put them back to full full light again. There's got to be a way of doing that, using solar energy or something. Because the lights are so dim, even when they're on, they're dim now. 
you know, years ago they were bright. Everything would be lit up, but not now. They, they don't even reach to the next light, like on the pavement. And they go off at one o'clock. So, you know, after one o'clock or midnight, one o'clock, whatever time they go off, it's pitch black. Ah, <sighs> the delivery just came. This is going to take me ages and ages to edit. The amount of disruptions and disturbances and interruptions that has occurred. And I'm figuring there's going to be another one any minute now. <sighs> So, I'm going to go, I hope I kind of answered your questions, probably didn't do a great job, but do I ever, hey, 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 I am the Prime Minister of England, you know, I was watching on the news that France, the Prime Minister has been kicked out, and I thought, oh, what are they going to do? And they can't have another election until next year or something. And then the the president was talking like, wait a minute. So if you've got a president of France, why do you need a prime minister? You don't need both. We have a prime minister. We don't have a president. America has a president. They don't have a prime minister. Anyway. <laughs> it confused me. So I, feel, I hear the neighbour on the way. So I'm going to go, thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we've spent together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again, like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... 
person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so, each time you hear my voice, you may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also 
am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands. I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have 
have noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally you breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a 
joyful heart. seems to just drip by so very slowly So deeply peaceful. Completely. Unattached. To any thoughts whatsoever in this moment completely free Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly 
but surely the muscles in your legs Pleasant feelings in your arms, in shoulders, deepening each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Peaceful. Deeply. There's a sense of peace. spreads through your very core.
even when you focus on your mind. slower even deep Very slow. Your stomach. Peaceful in your stomach. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed.
spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body shins and your calf muscles, feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. Your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even
Joy. The space. This space. Of peace. And safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice your forehead and your eyes. Seeing a sense of 
complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace.
Total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. 
even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort, and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together, almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice really does feel nice 
to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the 
front of your neck and your throat. Relax in and loose and calm. The sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before. And enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. The spreads into your hips, so down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and 
as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose. They're already Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. It feels so soft and gentle, so smooth. The feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message your arms you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light 
gentle. Focusing now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar Tips i 
muscles in your thighs. Your knees so relaxed. Muscles and your shins completely
Letting go of everything. So I'm going to start counting down now. From 20 down to 1. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. Further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, to focus in on your eyes. You'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may find do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes to begin counting down from ten down to one right now.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, and you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. You just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think Think about anything. So it, op it opens up a space, you know, a bit of a space, a gap. And the more I count down from 10 to 1, the bigger that gap becomes. So there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, bottoms of your legs, 
the shins and the calf muscles and the bones between your knees and your feet. Incorporating, of course, your ankles. So important. You know, anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that, because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. There's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. I was like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs, shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles. And your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet. We're just going to focus on the legs. And I realise. That now that I've mentioned your feet. You're probably. Focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. It's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your, your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. course it's protected by your legs so you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs that fold in between your legs you can just massage with your fingertips imagine your fingertips going inside Massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body, they're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And then when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit silly to start with 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone, double that, yet my ankles support my body all the time, although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down, as in fact my whole legs do, my feet feet also go whew, and my toes clap I'm so happy your legs really and I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, a very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each.
each muscle in your body. and just observing the sensation of letting go completely This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Six, Two. slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice. 
notice that there are some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, you just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them. You require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more with number seven.
imagine now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands, your fingers. There's nothing needed to be done. There's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, that your mind is starting to drift Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your Each 
starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. generally thinking about stuff. You 
take that away, which is what we do, what we do now. You're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer 
have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. Sure, I'm telling you, stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. The more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy. 
permission to let go because that's all it is it's just deciding to let go and when you press the play button on my recordings you have given permission for my voice to relax you when you press that play button you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends those changes within you Continue to flourish and grow. Transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose. For yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity because from now on your mind rejects negativity from now on you're going to start noticing when negativity arises You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. 
と negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. nice, doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. can continue to relax, if you choose you can drift to sleep, with every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty.
is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. to give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision you're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs. 
organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind, in fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax. sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start on a different part of your body. And you may find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. You get you alert again to my voice focusing on Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep, and that's the last you remember 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on the fingers. Maybe you can move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now and they all seem to just melt into one where does your right hand start and your left hand end almost as if Focusing on the knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your ankles.
entire body feels. Noticing how your mind feels now. go letting go letting go letting go letting going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands just 
gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. And the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you and just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders moving to the muscles of your shoulders
and maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch but very gently and you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders the sides and the back This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. Make it feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we'll do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. And what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger. 
someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and you do the same with your left arm and actually the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where there would have been that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want. Across a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, yet firm as you choose. And eventually, you get to the spine. You can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down. To your lower back. You can do that a few times. So 
sometimes people use the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine almost just push down go all the way down to the bottom of the spine each time releasing tension and opening up the body stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated now I'm going to move to one side to your right side and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis you're going to massage that area of your back I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side to the middle in fact to where your spine is massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing it's almost like kneading bread there's that big area which is firm yet lots there to massage potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged it releases so much from your body that's not useful starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now I'm going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body. And I'm going to do the same, this time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and massage.
Yes, it massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area with muscle tissue uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from the chest. So it's all connected, the chest from the back, connect together. Really massaging and just pulling some of that skin from the side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. as gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from Pretty much underneath your arm area, really. To your spine. And then continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. Go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. And you can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands, Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. And the back of your, back of your ankles. Just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet, gently but firm enough so they don't tickle, and just 
just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet the bottoms of your feet the sides your arches your heel you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And then moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I'd spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience while having your feet massaged, feel it really Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp.
massaging down the cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. moving down from your neck down to your chest starting by massaging the very top of your chest where the collarbone is either side of the collarbone Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. I feel there's quite a large area that you can move from one side to the next. where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest, Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, to feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, from just below your arms all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button round 
to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because you do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button, and then going the other way around, there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. So now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them. And I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, in front of your thighs. Gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoy feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred
going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. Each time I say a number, you can imagine that candle in front of you, and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow. just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just yourself to be even more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, and you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's a forest the pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes and there's the odd plane that goes by seems important whatsoever 
so. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first. Activity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding. Eight. 
to five. Ten breathing. Ninety four.
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission and you give the say so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all right, like a breath of relief. Oh, yeah, that's a real relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and that oh, feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least. And if you choose, you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two. And it feels blissful. Just by sitting there like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. And your mind feel prepared to let go of everything. Tension. 
emotions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and see more and more stable in. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind and it is almost like a literal unwinding it's like you press a button just releases and it's like a wheel like a cog like the inside of the clock just unwinding and it's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up and the energy that frenetic stress energy gradually winding down losing its power losing its strength as the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper and you may find stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realise you're listening to me again and that was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we're not, we may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, feels so nice 
just breathing out any excess feeling and tension and stress from every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things have come to a standstill be just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. Synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know when feeling completely calm, loose, and relaxed. It really is. benefits for your body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your hair muscles. this healing relaxation and as you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain they're not even necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling
this ever increasing sensation of warmth, comfort, with a spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this
this moment. So let's start off by focusing on the hands. Just be aware of the hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe move the fingers a little bit. Closing the hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, making your toes gently. feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them, maybe raising your eyebrows as it stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes. Scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs, and I just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, and noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, and as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you're looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, 
sensations of physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your knees, the palms and the biceps and between your elbow and your shoulders. As you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and you like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly. So you're not putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so even, bringing you more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. Noticing as you gently, very gently, and slowly tighten your muscles in the neck area. Notice how the tops of your arms feel. above your forehead. And as you are able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly, if that is difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, easing your hips, just so you can get more in tune with how your physical sensations of your lower abdomen. And as you move your attention Noticing how your tongue in your mouth feels, and that may help by moving your tongue around your mouth, maybe to the left, and then press that gently against the side of your mouth, and then to the right. 
rising up against it, the tip of the mouth coming down gently against the bottom of the mouth. Always very slowly and very, very gently. include the sides of the body because those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area and also into your buttocks.
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretching but it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small make up the larger movements, which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. The feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins, The 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm and your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just feeling like it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing forcing on and when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit like you tense the muscles gently Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back. Of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently, just stretched a little bit even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along and you feel in your chest just noticing what sensations Experiencing in your chest right now. Any 
so much of the chest. You see there's the collarbone leading to the chest, or the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not act different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side and underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest. Do I notice that I focus on my chest? I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels... It feels okay. little bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back that connection between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas back feels quite nice actually the good thing about this is you can if you want to you can just flex various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing and you do tense a muscle and you let it go and you let it relax it relaxes way more than it would normally. And you have to feel that you're able to do that. And you can 
doing it is you're um, you choose to be a prepared part of your body you need to be gentle with yourself at all And you need to smile. How much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. There's just my voice to listen to. Because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slowly down. As your body to fill your body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving that there, kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, when you get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. So, slowly and continue.
this. is something
Sonne.
seen how you physically feel. Because I can make you laugh and cry if you need to cry. And I will draw to attention you from the fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, I'm going to feel a little bit tingly. This time, I'm going to feel relief, tension, and stress, and the anxiety that you might have. Breathing through your sock, just breathing through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing hold your stomach and your navel through just your belly that's the below chest area you're surrounded in your belly that area the whole area you can feel the tension in your body whether it's light or just release in that area and you may notice that you start to get that area relaxed as Thank you. 
so can you make it kind of nice and tight with your eye and show it here just a little bit so focus on that area the glossy area of the eye is going to be a nice tight chunk of space around the eye around the brow around the eye but any tension that you might have through the eye whether it be fat
you to make it warm for the dark lords. I want to explore the fact that it feels like it's been there for a summer. For the dark lords. I'm not forcing myself, but giving myself it is a command though, isn't it, for my friend of the lords. And I'm feeling something a bit firm there, that I am not going to allow you to kill myself in that way. I'm not going to say to myself to that point, relax, let go. Um, I need to be gentle, but at the same time, someone I can't really have the same Pissed it off. I got a little pissed. I did get pissed at something I didn't know. And I think that more of that might be the thought. I think it's that thought. Just to get out. Um, to work that shit out of my psyche, my body, and my mind. And that took me just by the Focusing my heart. So I think it's from the heart. I'll just tell you how to relax. Just say, relax. As I focus on my breath. My feet are still. My hands are there. And my body is not still. And I think if you actually do it day after day. By focusing imagining that your hands are the heel of your foot and your foot are the heels. So talking 
into your heart as the sun rises. Let it sink. As your heart starts to rise. Focusing your eyes to who your eyes are towards. If you're saying the same word in your head, then find the right time and degree to go, I might say it wrong. Because you you might say wrong or right. You know, you, you might say it differently to your friend. Is perfect for you and it goes with your word today. If you tell your eyes to rise, right, to focus on your eyes, why would you not say wrong to anybody? So just tell your eyes to rise. start focusing on things and make sure you make it uh, you've got work to do, you've got lessons to learn, you've still got to go and do your paint job or whatever you're going to do and then just tell your eyes and if you've got that in your mind that you're just going to get to that one drawing or that goal that you've painted on that you're going to get it right you're going to get that that is the focus